All right, so section number two. So chapter four, demand theory. Four one, consumer demand theory. Uh, four two is elasticity. Elasticity is an important concept for business in general. It tells you how one variable affects another variable. Now, it tells you if there is a percent change in one variable, what is the percent change in another variable? So, elasticity will simply tell you percent, this is percent, okay? And this is delta. The sign delta means change. That's a Greek letter which is used in general for change. So, if there is a change in a, what is the percent change in B? So, if you raise the price of chocolate by 1%, will your demand fall a little or will demand fall a lot? Okay, so. From here, I'll now be explaining a lot for the next 30 minutes or 20, is we say elastic. Elastic. If something is elastic, it means there is a big change. If something is what the effect is inelastic. It simply means that it's a small change, small effect. Alright, let's provide a very simple example of inelastic demand. Let's say your income doubles. Suddenly you make twice more money. I'm just picking numbers random, doesn't matter. You make now 25,000 dirham per month and now you're making 50. Now you have so much more money. How much more water you will be drinking? Ah, it's the same. So this is a very simple example. Your income can go a lot, but you'll be treating almost the same. You're not going to change your demand much simply because your salary went up. All right, well, something happened and your salary from 25 went down to 15. Okay, so your salary goes down, down a lot, a lot, not just a little bit. How much less water you'll be drinking? Again, it's almost the same. In other words, your income can go down up a lot or can go down a lot, but your demand for water will change little, little. So let's try to write it out. So we say water demand Water demand is inelastic. If the price, sorry, if your income goes up a lot, you're still gonna be buying the same. You're not gonna change much. If your income goes down, you're still not gonna change much. Now, this particular case about the water where your income goes up, you're going to buy more, is called 
income elasticity. Income elasticity measures how much demand changes with increases or with changes in income. In other words, if income goes up by 1%, how much demand changes? Okay, so this is called income elasticity. Now, a completely different example. Your salary is same, same, same anyway. And the bottle of water costs, let's say, one dirham. Now the price goes to 1.25. Price is up. Okay. How is your demand going to change? You're gonna drink a lot less? No, I'm going to buy this. Hmm? No, it's the same. It's one You will buy maybe the same, maybe a little bit, just a little bit. So even if the price doubles from one to two dirham, your demand will go only little bit, only little bit. So this change in demand due to change in price is called price elasticity. Price elasticity. So, income elasticity is change in demand due to changes in income. Price elasticity is change in demand due to price changes. Okay. We said when demand is inelastic, the change is small. So, your price elasticity for water is small and your income elasticity for water is small. So your uh, price so you your we say price inelastic. Price inelastic. Price can change a lot. And you're also income inelastic for water. So now let's try gasoline. Are you price elastic or usually inelastic? Well, you just had, me too, I just had an increase in gasoline prices, right? Maybe five, maybe 10%, right? Now, are you driving a lot less or almost the same? Almost the same. Almost the same, yes. So number two, for gasoline, demand is relatively inelastic. If you gotta go to work, you go to work, you drive. You gotta go to the supermarket, you go to the supermarket. If you have a baby, you gotta pick it up or bring it to the hospital, you do what you have to do. So, your driving changes very little. It's exactly the same behavior in the United States with American consumers. It's exactly the same behavior with European consumers. It's exactly the same behavior in Japan and China and all consumers around the world. Demand for gasoline is inelastic. Well, how about this? Weather gets a little hot and electricity is expensive. I'm gonna and the price of electricity goes up a little bit, you're gonna use the air conditioning about the same or you're gonna use a lot less? Same, same. Almost the same. So now we are discussing a completely different concept. The concept of a goods which are luxury, that's I'm sure all understand. But the current one that I'm teaching is called necessity. Necessity is a good that you simply need and that you will consume same almost the same. Almost the same. Yeah, you might eat maybe 5% less, but you're not going to eat on half. Yeah, 
I might cut my coffee 10%, but I'm not going to cut in half, okay? Okay, the air conditioner, instead of running four hours, I can run it three and a half. So I can cut a little bit, but it will not cut a lot. These are all necessities. So uh, examples, oh, the general class of necessities will be food, partially housing, energy, is in electricity, gasoline, and overall transportation, overall transportation. These are all necessities. So, in generally, we can summarize that necessities are relatively inelastic, inelastic. Luxury, on average, will be elastic. relatively elastic. And here's the key. Uh, we say a luxury is defined by income. So luxury is income elastic. All right, example of a non-luxury, not necessarily a necessity, will be a Casio watch. Simple Casio watch, okay? And the opposite of a luxury will be Rolex. The low end will be a Swiss brand name. You're probably familiar with his so or his soft okay so as your income stays low you just demand the basic casio and nobody's going to be buying it all this is what most indians wear and most filipinos wear their low income employees now as your income increases your demand switches to maybe to so and on the very high end to rolex but i'm sure you can live without rolex just fine, okay? And at least I'm living and I'm fine, okay? You don't need that. So the point is luxury is income elastic as income rises and rises and rises. So the basic car is Toyota and the luxury is Lexus, okay? So Toyota is the basic transportation as your income increases. Demand for luxury increases rapidly, okay? So, at the very low end, people don't buy many Lexuses when their salaries are extremely low. But as the income rises, pretty much nobody's driving a Toyota. You know, all high income will be having luxury goods, okay? So, this is, these are income, Elastic. On the other end, these are inelastic. And these are both, necessities are both price inelastic and income inelastic. Okay? Is that fairly clear? Now, what about phones? Demand for phone, elastic or inelastic? That's a tricky one. According to Ricardo. Yes, so let's clarify again. Demand for phone is, ex is necessity, is extremely inelastic. But there is a high elasticity according to the brand name. You see, I mean, your phone breaks. Are you going to buy a new one? Sure, yes, of course. I mean, you can't live. I mean, I can't live without a phone for more than a day or two, right? You say we are addicted to our phones. A phone is a necessity. I mean, it's very hard to live your life today without a phone. So, your phone breaks, something happens, it's stolen, you gotta buy a new one, period, okay? It's a high necessity. But within the brand names, whether it's LG, or iPhone or Galaxy, you're highly elastic. So in this case, it is a 
monopolistic competition. You gotta choose between the brand names. And let's say you don't have a lot of money for whatever reason, and if a moon breaks, you're gonna go for a cheaper, I don't know, LG or oh the Chinese Huawei, right? The Huawei. It's a relatively cheaper. It does the same job, it's got the same operating system, it runs fine. You don't need to have the very high expensive luxury model. Okay? It will do just as it's going to be phone calls, and it's going to show messages, and it's still going to have Facebook, and whatever else you use. Okay? So, the class of phones is a necessity, but the brand name, not. In other words, for the class, you're hired. Same thing with rice. Well, uh, uh, rice is a special good. Let's say in Thailand, they, are, they can't live without rice. They think if they're only rice for three or seven days, they're just gonna die, okay? Same thing with Filipinos. I mean, you can't make a Filipino not eat rice for seven days. I mean, they're addicted to rice, okay? That's a whole different story. The point is that in Europe, you raise the price of rice, Europeans are going to cut two, three, ten times. Hey, my parents, if they see the price of rice is expensive, they might not eat for a whole year. They don't care. So, for food, demand is highly inelastic. But within the foods, you can switch easily between food. Oh, rice is expensive, potatoes are cheap, they're going to switch to potatoes. Okay, so within the category, there may be very high elasticity. Well, there is little substitute for electricity. You can't run air conditioning on anything else. Okay, now in Europe, we have substituted substitute between gasoline and diesel, diesel engines. So. You raise the price of gasoline, people switch immediately to diesel. Now, we're inelastic with respect to fuels, with respect to fuels, but we are highly elastic with respect to diesel and gasoline. Diesel goes up, people switch to gasoline. Gasoline goes up, people switch to diesel. And we also run our cars on natural gas natural gas, uh, I mean, you produce some natural gas over here, but if both diesel and gasoline get expensive, we switch to natural gas. It's a little bit of an extra. You pay maybe, I don't know, 1,000 there, how at most. It's a special thing, and the car runs on natural gas. So people will be switching between them, but they still need a fuel, and the fuel itself is a necessity as a class, just like for some people, the coffee is a necessity due to the addiction. Well, for other people, the sugar, that is the necessity because of an addiction. For other people, will be chocolate because it's an addiction, okay? Uh, but overall, you can switch between them. All right, so let's see what else I got. All right, so uh, we've discussed the price elasticity, okay? We want to calculate, is it time to go? Five more minutes, right? Uh, so, you have the percentage change in one, the percentage change in the other. So, they call it elasticity in price. The formula goes like this. It's the change, price change in quantity. This is the change in quantity divided by the quantity gives you percentage change, okay? So, this is the change in quantity, and to make percentage, you say change in the quantity, divide by quantity, says percentage change. So, do I need to write it? Well, yeah, you multiply by 100, that's okay, okay? Let me multiply it for you so it can feel a lot comfortable, right? And this is the percentage change in the quantity for a percentage change in price. So, percentage change in price is change in price divided by 
price to get the percentage multiply by 100. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now I cancel the 100. Okay? So this becomes the definition of, in this case, price elasticity of demand. Now it should be very easy to write the income elasticity. Can we do the income? Income elasticity. Elasticity income by definition is change in percentage quantity. Percentage change in quantity. And here becomes change in income divided by income, which gives you the percentage change in income. Okay, so these are the basic definitions. These are the uh, equation, okay, let me write it out here. Equation four, seven on page one, three, two. One, three, two. Let's see what else I have so that we can complete uh, today. Now, you can calculate mathematically you can calculate, let's say this is a demand curve. You can take here one point and you can calculate what is called a point elasticity. And point elasticity is a mathematical concept which is difficult to understand because it requires differential equation. So, we use the other one, the easier for you to see, to calculate, to understand. It's called arc elasticity. And for the next quiz, I'll give you a simple and easy calculation about arc elasticity, just like I'm going to show you now. So, the price here is... Five, that's our coffee, right? And from five, the price goes to four. The quantity of coffee, I don't know, for a whole month, I'm going to be drinking maybe 90 coffees, and then I'll be drinking 100, okay? I mean, yeah, that's for me, normally. I mean, that's what I'm drinking anyway, between 90 and 100 a month. Yes? Um, I want to explain this is slightly right or not. Point elasticity. This is this. This is. Well, hard to explain. I'm not even okay, trying I, to I explain. Can explain example. I don't know. I just write it. Yes, uh, it's difficult to provide example with point elasticity, it. and it's very difficult to explain. That's why I'm saying is you don't need to know it. But it's very easy to explain the arc elasticity. I want to say one example. In yes. physics, this is we have at the point elasticity. Like when we have a spring of uh, iron, we uh, do it like this. If it is not rotated back like this, this is the point of elasticity. Nothing to do with it, but that's a different story. It's completely, it's a mathematical concept with differentials, you differentiate into a point, you use high mathematics for which you need derivatives and derivative calculus have nothing to do with irons or anything like that. It has to do with very advanced, difficult and sophisticated mathematics. And it's difficult to see it and understand. So just don't bother with it. But this is very easy to see, it's very easy to understand. So let's try and calculate if the price falls from five to four, what is my price elasticity? You all should be able to get your pen right now and do exactly what I'm doing, which is basically plug into this 
formula. Of course, the elasticity, price elasticity is negative, so sometimes we may take a minus sign up front because of the law of demand in general. So let's make this simple calculation. Delta change in quantity is, so the elasticity of the coffee is, what's the change in price? One. One. And what's the base price? The base price is, five. we say from five, move down to four. That's like 20% change in price or so. And what's the change in quantity? Ten. And what's the base price? Nine. Well, in this case, it's ninety. So it's a simple calculation. So what's the calculation? One over five becomes one over five, and this becomes ninety over ten. The zeros cancel becomes 9 over 5 and we just say I'm rounding on purpose 2. Elasticity is 2. Well, what does it mean uh, 2? For a 1% in, let's see, oh these are the quantities, oh, 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 oh. you see? On top is the quantity, so this is the quantity here. You see the calculation, let's redo this. We got it. This is the price. This is the quantity. The change in quantity is 10 out of 90, and the change in price is 1 out of 5. Okay. You see now the difference? Yes. Is it visible? Yes. It's visible. So, what is it now? 10 over 90. Multiply by 5 over 1 and becomes 5 9, which is approximately 1 half. Um, so, what does it mean? It means 1% change in prices results in half a percent change in quantity. So, here the price, uh, the, the price is changed by roughly 20%. The price changed by 20%. And the quantity changed by 10%, approximately. Which is, okay, let me write, this means approximately 1% change and half. So, the change is one half percent. You raise the price one percent, but you reduce only half. Now, is this elastic or inelastic? Yes? I don't understand the last one. Can you repeat it? You mean this or this or which one or there? This one? Yeah. Ten percent. Okay. So, what's the price change? So, change, price, Percentage change, okay? Okay, change is here. How much was the price change? The price change from 5 to 4. So it becomes 5 minus 4 divided by 5. So this is 1 over 5, which is 0.2. Multiply by 100 becomes 20%. You understand this part now? So this is the 20% here, which is price in the denominator. Now, change in the quantity in percentage term is from uh, 90 to 100 is 10 units divided by 90 is 0.111, which is the same as 11.1%, which is about 11%.
So a 20% change in price results only 11% change in quantity. Okay? Now, is this from everything that I explained elastic or inelastic? Hmm? Because it's small. Yes, the change um, in quantity is small. So this is, so uh, where is it? One half percent. So this is 0.5 elasticity. Now notice how the percent cancels with the percent. So 0.5 is inelastic. Okay. And now we finish very quick and very easy. Very quick and very easy. Definition, definition. You see, I explained here, elastic is big change. Well, what does it mean, Nick? And I explained here, elastic is small change. Okay, so definition. Elastic is when the price elasticity EP is oh 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 my mistake my mistake one when the elasticity is greater than one so when the price elasticity is greater than one we say that it is Price elastic. Inelastic. Oh. Is defined when the price elasticity is less than one. In other words, Elasticity of more than one means one percent change in price. Quantity changes by more than one percent, meaning big. So let's write it out here just a second. Big. Big is defined as more than one, and less than one is the small question. If I see the upper, hmm? it's less than the down. It's mm -hmm. already less than. So this is more than is elastic. Uh, this is less than. Yes, so, yes. More higher elasticity. So, the elasticity means uh, less elastic, more elastic. High number means. Yes, you can see from the numbers. Yes. It's the above, it's more than down, it's more than one. Yes, more than one is. We just call it elastic, it's a name, it's a definition. If it's more than one, it's just called elastic. Everybody in the world called, calls it that. It's a name, it's a definition. Okay? That's all, that's it. Uh, so, I may have a few other things. So, uh, again, for the quiz, I'll be expecting you a simple calculation of this is arc elasticity. You don't need and you don't have to study point elasticities too much, no need. This is simple, it's easy. Again, we can use it for books or phones or any other example. I'll come up with some uh, example uh, to, for, to give you a simple calculation. Is this good enough for today? Yes. yes. Alas?